Hey everybody, I'm on holiday at the moment, so uh, no clover shirt. But anyway, we are finishing off today our little look at John's first letter, God, 1 John, and we're looking at chapter 5, verse 21. It says, little children, keep yourself from idols. That's how he finishes, that's his concluding comment. It almost feels like it's kind of a cliffhanger, it feels like it's something to be resolved. But he ends just... Little children, keep yourself from idols. So the little children he's talking about are his his congregations, the, uh, the people that he's speaking to in the letter. And this final exhortation, this final command, this final instruction, this final warning, keep yourself from idols. Stay on track with God. Stay true to his word. Stay true to his way of being, his calling, your life. What are these idols? I guess we can take kind of a, if you like, a natural and a supernatural view, or a, a physical and a spiritual, if you like. Because sometimes an idol can be a thing. It can be a car, it can be a football team, it can be family, friends. Those things physically that distract us from worshipping God, that take away our attention. You know, they say if you want to know where your priorities lie, just look at what you spend your time doing, because you're going to spend your time on your priorities. If you're spending way more time looking at your club's, uh, football club's webpage or going to the matches, if you're thinking about them in your spare time, odds are they've got a higher priority than you. If you're main focus in life is your family and friends and you hear this all the time don't you? you know, my family are my life it's great having family let's not knock that if that's what you see as being your life missing out because god is our priority god has to be our priority because he's the one that made us he's the one that loves us he's the one that gave himself for us so that we could be in relationship with him the other side of this is the spiritual side. Now, sometimes when we hear the word idols, we kind of think about uh, like the you know, little wooden carvings of African gods or Native American uh, gods, totem poles, that sort of jazz. And there's part of it that's like that. Uh, for example, Buddha. See so many statues in people's homes of Buddha, don't we? And you know, I'm sure people will say, "Oh, it's just a statue. Or, you know, well, it's just a thing. It doesn't have any any say over me, any power over me." But just like how, how what we spend our time on determines where our priorities lie. Likewise, the things that we have around us have an influence on on the way that we think. If we have a statue of Buddha or of anything else that is deified, that is to say, put up on a pedestal as being like God, what we're actually saying by doing that is that God doesn't own top spot in our life. It isn't God that's on the throne of our life. It's something else. It's someone else. Now, some of you might not believe that there is a spiritual realm, if you like, anything beyond the physical. Some of you might like to think that there are angels, guardian angels, uh, patron angels, that sort of thing. I might not be too keen on thinking that there might be demons, fallen angels, whatever you want to call them. But there is a reality beyond this reality. There's more to life than what we see in the physical realm. That's not a surprise, it shouldn't be. We know that our minds, where they're linked to the physical realm by our brains, are not just our brains. We know that there are things beyond the purely physical, like love or uh, forgiveness or mathematics, which again are expressed in the physical realm, but are not physical. There are things like angels, there are things like demons. And this isn't to sound sensationalist, it isn't to sound 
over spiritual it's just a, a, a way of a fact of life if we believe that that god exists we have to believe that that angels and demons exist because the bible tells us that they do exist in the same way that they tell us that god exists and those those spiritual beings those spiritual realities they can sometimes take our attention away from god as well if you're feeling oppressed in life sometimes it's a physical thing sometimes it's a mental thing sometimes it's a spiritual thing we all do well to keep tabs on on where we put god in the pecking order of our life do we put him at number one two three four ten twenty fifty a hundred quite making it on the list god deserves top spot anything else that is on top spot is an idol as john warns us we need to keep ourselves from idols because we we were created by a god who self-identifies as love why would we want to have anything else other than pure unadulterated love at the center of what we do and who we are and how we view life little children let's keep ourselves from idols See you again on Wednesday. Another beginning. God bless.